Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. These are the three crowns that you cast for practice, and we're going to use them to give you some practice in soldering before you have to solder the bridge. What uh, we want you to do is take a piece of utility wax and simply line up the crowns in that utility wax so that it approximates a bridge situation. So we'll simply line up the crowns here and try to create interproximal areas that would represent a bridge. You notice I'm having to tip this crown a bit so that as we place it in, we're going to get an open embrasure between the two. What we don't want is to try to have you cast two crowns where they're in contact all the way down the proximal surface. You have to have this open embrasure on the cervical, as you can see. And this may cause you to have to do a sort of an exaggerated curve of speed as I'm doing here. Let's depress this middle one a little further. And then we can get this distal one in place. Okay, the marginal ridges should line up somewhat. They should come in a, in a pretty good line. But the most important thing is as you look through the embrasure areas that the cervical margins are not butted up directly together. Once, now once we're satisfied with this alignment, we're going to want to put a little bit of flux right in those contact areas to make the soldering a little bit easier. So we can just gent or carefully remove the mesial and the distal crown and put a little bit of flux in those proximal areas and then reassemble the, the crowns. So we'll put just a little bit of flux in this area here. And you don't want much. This is a very, very thin coating. And we'll do the same thing up here. Very thin coating. Okay, now we're going to splint this together. And what we want to use for that is a couple pieces of wire or an old couple of old handpiece burrs. I'm going to use paper clip wire here. And we'll simply cut two lengths to size. And you may have to bend this wire slightly to get it in close approximation with the occlusal surface. Here you can see it lays on the surface quite well. We're now going to loot this down using a paintbrush technique with Duralay. First wet your brush and put a little bit of liquid on the occlusal surfaces of these crowns. We don't want them swimming in liquid, but we want to get a very good adherence of the Duralay to the gold. So we're just going to tack this into place. It'll take a little while for this material to set using it in this fashion. So we'll just slowly build this up and join these crowns together with it. Now we have the first wire looted in place. We're going to put a second wire on, and this one will 
crisscross, run parallel to, whatever, but it's not going to be in this, exactly the same plane as the first wire because we want to prevent any rotation around the wire, which would result in a poor or an inaccurate relationship. So now we've got these wires crisscrossed, and we're just going to loot that second wire down. And we can come right across the bridge here and have a very solid acrylic bridge between all these crowns. Okay, we've now completed the uh, placement of the wires and note that we've taken the acrylic and it goes right across the wire splint right across tooth to tooth. This will make this very rigid and because there are two wires crisscross it cannot be twisted around the wires so this is a very stable very uh, accurate way of joining these crowns together. All we have to do now is wait for the Duralay to harden. Now that the Duralay has set, we can take the crowns off the wax and turn it over. And you can see how much room we have between these crowns to put a solder joint. Now, between these two crowns, the Duralay has run in and actually given us some block out for our solder joint. We'll add to it with wax, but we've got part of it in Duralay. If you look on this other side, no Duralay has run in, so all this block out will be in wax. It really doesn't matter. Either way, it works fine. What you don't want to have is so much Duralay running down here is that this whole area is plugged and you have Duralay all the way down to the margin of your crown. This margin must be exposed, it must be available to be buried in investment, or you risk burning the margin off your crown during the soldering process. So if you have Duralay all the way down to the margin, take a hot instrument, heat it up, and get rid of some of that Duralay, because you must have a millimeter margin showing in order to properly invest this. So what we're going to do at this point is we're going to add a little bit of wax in this area, making sure that we have enough block out for the soldering process. We don't need it right down in the center, but we're going to come up here, make sure that this is well blocked out. Prior to investing this for soldering. Now that we have that joint down, we'll come to the other joint here. Same thing. Do not leave a gap right in the center of this block out area. In other words, here, if you notice, my dropper is a little thick. Tendency would be to say, well, I can't get it in there. I'm not going to put any wax in there because I'll get wax right down to my margin. What you're going to have to do is go to a finer dropper and drag that wax all the way through because if you leave it like that, investment will come up in that gap and you will not be able to get a solder joint. Now you notice that wax was brought all the way through this embrasure area. If I turn this just a little sideways, difficult to show, but there's a little gold going beyond the wax block out on this middle crown. So we don't want the block out right down to it. You risk destroying your margin. Here you can see on the distal crown gold down beyond that block out. Now you've set this up in wax, and it's just as important that no wax be inside the crown out on these buckle surfaces. So just take a moment and scrape that wax out. You just don't want a, a lot of 
waxy material here, it's all right to have a, a small amount. You wouldn't want a big blob like that because that would be a void underneath your soldering investment. That area could superheat and melt that margin. Okay, now that we've cleaned the wax out of the inside of the crowns and off the outside of the crowns, we are ready to invest these crowns for soldering. The soldering investment you're going to be using is uh, from Whipmix, and the proper amount should be two scoops, these are gel trait scoops, of Whipmix investment in 18 milliliters of water. So we can just dump the water into the bowl here and put in our investment. And this should come to a nice consistency here. This is, as you notice, not, not real thick, but about the creamy consistency. You can vibrate this if you wish, but it's not necessary. You should now pick up your crowns, take an inlay brush, pick up your investment, and this should be painted. You notice I'm hand vibrating this into the crown to remove any air. We do not want to trap air inside these crowns, particularly down by the thin margins. If you do, that area could get very hot and you could lose the margin. It can happen. So we've got two of these invested. We don't want to get too much here at a time. You notice the first increment. We want to tease in and then you can pick up a little more and be sure that you have this all totally invested. Now notice that we have these brim full. We don't have investment all over the outsides of the crown. And we can just set this aside. Now, we would like to have a very stiff investment so that as we sit the crowns into the block of investment, they don't sink through the investment. And an easy way to do that you simply take a paper towel and dump some of the investment into the paper towel. You notice it doesn't run out of there like soup. It hangs in the bowl. But we're going to dump some in the paper, paper towel. Leave a little in the original consistency in case you need it. And we're just going to wring the excess water out of this. Don't take every bit of water out. It has to be fluid enough for use. But you can see here, as I open it up, it's considerably drier than it was. Take about that much, and we're going to roll this into a ball. You notice by kneading it, we're going to get all the laps out, all the air inclusions out of the investment. And here we have a, a ball of investment that we can form. And we're going to form it about the length of the crowns that we need. Take a glass slab and set it on the slab. Now we pick up our crowns and we will simply invert them on the investment. Just set it right on the investment and we'll tease them down just a little bit. 
We want the crowns mostly exposed. We want the margins well covered, but the crowns themselves are sticking out of the investment. You don't want this sunk in the investment, because if it's way down in the investment, you're not going to be able to heat it adequately to get a easily solder these crowns together. Now, if I turn this over, you can see how the investment has come out of the crown, it's been forced out. We can just simply take the brush and bring that hump of investment down. We can do the same thing to this other side. We don't want those sharp areas sticking up. And the areas here that are blocking in between the crowns, we want these fairly open. So right at this time, while this is still soft, we can take the brush and start bringing that out. Okay, now that's getting a little bit too hard for the brush, so we're going to switch to a different instrument. You can use, you can use number seven wax spatula. I'm using a little different instrument here. And we're just going to come down here and carve out a flame trough. What we want to do is create an area that we can get some heat into this joint area. And so we're just cutting the excess soldering investment away. And it's much easier to do it this time while it's only semi-set than it is to let it get totally hard. Okay, now we have cleared all the investment away from the embrasure area and made the flame troughs. And you can see there's a little investment caught up on the sides of the crowns there right in the embrasure area. That'll have to be cleaned out before we're ready to solder. But this is still a little bit wet, so we've got it fairly well formed. And when this sets up enough, what we're going to do is trim it on the model trimmer or with a lab knife. We want to have about a quarter of an inch of investment beyond the perimeter of the crowns. So what we want to do is right in this area, this should be about a quarter of an inch away from the edges of the crowns. And then we don't want a sharp edge here. We will round that with a lab knife. The uh, size of the soldering block actually right at this point on trimmed is is fairly good, but we'll make it a little easier for ourselves by having a little less volume of soldering investment. Okay. Now I've trimmed the block of the soldering investment back. You can see that we are about a quarter of an inch away from the perimeter of those crowns. And now we want to round this edge here because as we heat this up, this will tend to concentrate heat here. and We want the heat concentrated in the crowns. So we're going to round this and simply take a lab knife and scrape this. This is very easy to do at this point. And we will just come right around, work around the perimeter, and round this off. You can see now that we have finished trimming the investment and washed all of the little particles of investment out of the connector areas out of the embrasure areas so that these are open for soldering and we have a nice rounded edge to this soldering block. So this will make it easier for us to get the proper amount of heat in that as we're soldering. Now we're ready to take the splint off of the uh, soldering investment. And we're going to do that simply by holding this with a pair of soldering tongs and inverting the splint over a flame and start to burn that Duralay off. Now don't get this too hot. You're going to save time if you just get that Duralay molten. If it starts to flame, just blow it out and try to keep that from burning. If you burn it, I guess it's, it's no great catastrophe, but if we get this the right consistency, it's just going to peel right off there. And you can see it's starting to bubble there and 
and uh, getting pretty hot and we're going to see if we can't just peel this off here. See it's soft. Not ready just to let go though. And we don't want to get it too hot at this point because we still got to put some flux in there and still have to put our anti-flux on. Now this will take you several minutes. There you can see it just starting to peel off. You can see how soft that is. You don't want to pull too hard because you don't want to pull the crowns out of your investment. And it is possible. So be cautious here. You see now we're getting big chunks to pull off. More heat here. It's rather doughy. You can see that we've gotten most of the so the splint off, we've still got a little, couple little chunks out here, and this is soft. This is, is warm, it's, it's not extremely hot. And got this fairly clean now. And we can actually now drop some flux into the joints, a little more flux, pick up some, some flux, and just carefully put it right in that joint area, let it flow right down there. And you don't want very much. You can see how much I have on this instrument. Very small amount. And just touch your joint area and let it flow in there. Now that those areas are fluxed, we're ready to place our anti-flux. The flux is going to help the, the uh, solder flow in areas where we want it. And the anti-flux, of course, will prevent it from flowing in across the occlusal surface. So you can use a soft lead pencil at this point and put some anti-flux on, or you can use the rouge that you have. And the way to use the rouge is to take a little chloroform, or, or you can even use Duralay liquid, put it in a dappen dish, wet your brush, go across the stick of rouge and get a little bit of a paste there and then carefully put a strip of anti-flux right next to your joint, but don't let any go into the joint area. If it goes into the joint area, you will never get any solder in that joint. You notice that it's, the anti-flux is into that triangular fossa, but it's not on the outer incline of the marginal ridges. It's just protecting the occlusal surface and we haven't got any in the joint area. Once we have our anti-flux and flux properly placed, we can place the indicator pieces of solder so that as we're heating the investment, we can tell when it's ready to solder. Now our indicator pieces are about the size you have notched soldering rod, and it's one notch of solder as an indicator. And here you can see that I'm placing it right here in the, in the joint area. Pick up a second piece and put it right there. And you can see the pieces of indicator solder in both joint areas. Before you start actually heating the, the bridge, be sure that you have placed your solder, your rod of solder, into a hemostat and just dip that into your flux. Get a little bit of flux on that solder. Put this aside where you can get at it easily. You may want to leave your flux jar open and leave that aside, but when you really get the bridge hot, the, the flux will turn white and ball up. And in that case, it's not going into the deep end of the joint and it is not very effective. So if you do not have the bridge fluxed at this point in time, 
and you get it very hot, you're going to have trouble. Okay, we have set up a, a ring stand here and we have a Bunsen burner going underneath the ring stand to help give us a little extra heat. And now we're going to adjust the, the torch to a soldering flame. The amount of gas that you want coming out initially is, a, is quite a small amount here. Well, that's about right for our, the volume of gas. And let's just check it now. Just slowly turn on the air. And a soldering flame is a pencil shaped flame. It'll have a little hiss to it. You can see this is still a reducing flame. The, uh, the flame itself. The flame itself is a very much of a brush, it's very long. Soldering flame, we're going to give it just a little more air, a little more hiss, and we can tell when it's a soldering flame by looking at these, the orifices that surround the major orifice. Each one of those orifices has a distinct flame. You see that? I'll cut the air down. You'll see the distinctness go. You see it comes into one long cone cut it back and we have many separate cones. Now that is a neutral flame and that's what we want for soldering. And you can see this flame is in the neighborhood of about an inch and a half to two inches long to the inner cone, right to here. Now that inner cone is the reducing area of this neutral flame. This dark inner cone is on burn gases. And we're going to concentrate our heat right here, right at the tip of the unburned gases. So once we have a good soldering flame, we'll place our investment on our ring stand. And we have the, we have the indicator pieces of solder there and we're ready to go. Hold the torch, if you're right-handed, hold the torch in your left hand. Hold it directly above your soldering investment. And you're going to start heating this up. Come out around the outside just a little bit. Start heating it slowly. If there's still excess moisture in here, you don't want it to start to boil. It will crack your investment. And when this investment starts to get hot, you notice I'm not playing the flame on the crowns themselves, I'm on the investment. When this investment starts to get hot, you will start to see a dark pinpoint develop in the area where your flame is going. And that is when you are at the right distance from that investment. Trying to play that inner cone right on the investment. And what we're, we're just going to keep doing this until we see the indicator pieces flash. And then we will add solder. We still have a ways to go in the heating process. You notice I keep the torch moving. I'm going all the way around the perimeter. You notice the crowns now are starting to discolor. They're starting to heat up. They will start to discolor like that, then they will turn cherry red, and then a frosty gold color. And it's when they get to that frosty gold color that we will be ready to solder. You can see those crowns just getting discolored and they start to turn a gold color. Here you can see the flash on the far side. So what we're going to do now is add a little extra solder to this. Come up through and see it pull it through. Run it back and forth a couple times. It's just like vibrating to get the gas out. Now we're coming to the other side. Notice I'm heating from one side, adding solder on the on the opposite side. Pull it back and forth a couple times, and that's done. Okay, we have turned the gas off now, and we're letting the crowns cool. Now, as you remember from dental materials. 
If we quench this right away, we will have the gold in its softest condition. Now, we've already adjusted the margins, and we should be able to just go to polish this. And if this were a bridge, we'd want the bridge as hard as possible because it's spanning a uh, edentulous area, and we want it strong. So we would let this bench cool for at least two minutes, possibly even let it come down to room temperature on its own. That would harden the alloy and give you a much harder uh, bridge. So we'll let this cool before we break it out of the investment. We've now taken the crowns out of the investment and cleaned them up. And we've made sure that we've gotten all the investment out of the inside, the oxides off. And you can see the condition now of the solder joints. And these have, have not been touched at this point. This is just as they were done in the soldering. And you can see that the, the joint here on the right-hand side of the screen has a finished appearance to it in, in shape and bulk. So it needs very, very little uh, dressing and polishing. The other joint is a little bit larger, and it does not have the sharp definition. And so we're going to have to shape that a little bit. Now, the instrument we're going to use is a separating disc. Stabilize the the crowns, and you're going to be cutting with the edge of that disc, just coming through and forming the shape of that solder joint. Now we want a heart-shaped joint, and so the point of the heart should be pointing towards the gingiva. So as you can see, I'm taking some of the bulk off the buccal and lingual aspect of the joint. Being careful not to hit the margins of the crowns. Now there's not as much room here as you will have on the bridge. So this will be actually more difficult to do at this point than it will be when you work on your bridge. But here now you can see how we have formed that joint, taken all the roughnesses out of it, and tried to make it heart-shaped. Now as we come up on the occlusal aspect, we want to inspect the, the uh, buccal lingual width of the joint, which appears to be very good. We would like to see some separation between the two marginal ridges. You notice here we have two marginal ridges in the joint in between. We don't have a straight um, piece of metal there. And we do have that separation back on the distal joint, but it seems to be just a little bit indistinct. So we're just going to form that up just a little bit. Now the only thing that we want to do further with these joints is give you the experience of a little bit of polishing so we can switch to a Moore's disc. I'm going to be using a medium sand first and then a medium cuddle disc. And we're simply going to use this very similar to the way we used our separating disc and come in here and polish these joint areas. Here you can see what we've done with the, the first joint that needed really no shaping. We just put a little polish on that and now we will take the rough areas out of the joint that we did have to shape.
Now we've got that partially finished, now we just go to a little finer disc and we'll take those scratches out. Okay, and this is a medium cuddle disc. And here you can see the solder joints now. We've, we've smoothed them up, they're free of pits. We have room for the cervical margins. They are not, would not be strangulating the soft tissue. Their shape is a, is a heart shape with the apex of the heart pointing towards the, the cervical margin. And this is as far as we want you to go with finishing the solder joints in the soldering exercise. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.